how I told you in the last one that talking about natural climate change is definitely something we should do and it's important because it happens, but it's not everything? Let's do that now. So natural climate change is certainly a thing that's happened. It's always happened. It will continue to happen. And this is because of Earth's Milankovitch cycles. Now you might remember that from astronomy. If you don't, that's totally fine. We're gonna go over it again here. But Milankovitch cycles, if you do remember, or if you don't or whatever, are just the three main different changes that Earth makes. It's its tilt, it's called obliquity. It's its precession. And it is its um, eccentricity how far closer away we are to the sun. Now remember that we basically are orbiting in a circle. We're not, it's an ellipse, but it's pretty close to a circle, which is what keeps our climate fairly regulated. So what are some of these changes? Well, this is the natural changes, but we eventually have to get to the elephant in the room, which is the anthropogenic change, the human change. So what are some of the evidences um, and what's some of the data that we have and how do scientists know that this stuff is happening? Well, let's look at the first thing, the ice ages. We know that ice ages exist. We know that one happened about 10,000 years ago. It was called the Pleistocene. And, you know, we're technically still coming out of the Pleistocene. We're still warming from that a little bit. <clears throat> now, that's true. That's definitely true. And you might have heard, well, climate change isn't real because we're just leaving an ice age. No, that's not what's happening. We are leaving the ice age, but that's not why um, climate is changing and the rate and the factors that it is. This is always gonna happen. Ice ages have always happened and will happen again in the future. That's not what's going on here with anthropogenic change. The next thing you might have heard is, well, volcanoes are just erupting and that's changing it. Volcanoes do erupt and they do spew a lot of gases into the atmosphere and they do emit a lot of carbon dioxide. Nope, not it. Different type of carbon dioxide. Remember when we talked about isotopes back in energy sources and I said there's carbon 12, 13, and 14? Not the same ones, sorry. It can change climate locally, short term, and then it's done. Not a long term effect. Okay, so maybe it's El Nino and La Nina. Maybe you've heard about those things that happen out in the Pacific Ocean and that's what's changing it. And it's really just, oh, well the Pacific Ocean warms up or the Pacific Ocean cools down and it changes precipitation patterns and that's why we're getting uh, more rainfall or less rainfall or more dry or more arid or less or whatever. They do happen. And no, we don't totally understand it at this point and we're still trying to figure it out. We know it happens in about two to seven year cycles but we don't really get it yet. Nope. Still not that. So then what we have to then do is, well, let's look at how the earth is moving and let's look at the tilt and let's look at the eccentricity and let's look at everything that we talked about back in astronomy. And I told you to remember it because now we're getting back to it. So yeah, those cycles do happen and earth does have changes that naturally occur and they take extremely long periods of time. And that's how we know that that's not what's happening right now. This is happening and has happened very extremely quickly, especially when you look at things on a geologic or astronomical scale. So when I say a geologic time scale, when things happen quickly, we're talking like 20,000 years. That's quick for geology. That's super fast for geology. Sometimes 500,000 or a million years can be quick. We're talking with anthropogenic change, two to 300 years. That's not nearly, like that's a tiny, tiny speck on the geologic time scale. And that's a tiny, tiny speck of how long humans have been around. So to understand this, we need to understand a couple of different things. The first is the carbon cycle. And you've probably already talked about the carbon cycle a little bit, but that's how carbon goes in and out of the atmosphere and in and out of the ground and in and out of us and in and out of plants and animals and all sorts of things like that. We know that carbon dioxide exists. It has existed. It will continue to exist. That's not something that we can get rid of, nor do we want to, because greenhouse gases are not necessarily a bad thing. And that's misconception number one that we need to address with anthropogenic change. Just because we talk about carbon dioxide being bad doesn't mean that the greenhouse effect is bad. Without the greenhouse effect, we would not have heat enough on the earth for us to live. So the greenhouse effect is actually good. The problem 
is when we emit too many greenhouse gases and we have too strong of a greenhouse effect and that's what's trapping the heat in and that's what's causing our problems. So we see the animals decay and we see that um, when humans or plants or whatever um, die, we release carbon back. Also, when we release our processes, however you want to phrase that, you know what I'm talking about, that also releases things like nitrogen and phosphorus and carbon. When animals breathe, carbon dioxide, you get the idea. This is constantly moving. Just like you asked about the water cycle, the carbon cycle is constantly moving and we have to keep this moving and decomposers, as we're gonna talk about in biosphere, are a huge component of this because without it cycling around, then we're gonna be in trouble because it's gonna to get to the end, it's gonna die and that's gonna be it. It has to keep moving, otherwise things don't exist and things don't continue to grow and live the way that we're used to. So getting to the greenhouse effect, there's some greenhouse gases and greenhouse emissions that we need to talk about. Water vapor is actually the most prominent one. Water. The next one's carbon dioxide, which is important, but like I said, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, here's the tricky one, methane. While methane is a much smaller amount of atmospheric gases, it is far, far more potent than carbon dioxide. Even though there's less of it, one methane is equal to 20 to 25 times the amount of carbon dioxide. And what releases methane? Well, one of the main things is cows and livestock. And as you're gonna see and as we're gonna talk about, our food choices greatly impact our climate choices. So I'm not saying anything right now, but we're gonna talk about how diets can affect climate and what we can do. And no, not all of us have to go vegetarian or vegan. That's not what I'm saying. However, maybe if we cut back a little bit, we cut back some of those greenhouse gases and we all can you know, still enjoy whatever it is you like to eat. The last one is CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. This was a big deal back in the 90s and earlier than that with aerosols. And this is what was in those spray cans like hairspray and paint and all that stuff. And it was used as a propellant. It turns out it kind of really screwed with the atmosphere and we need to stop using it because it was messing with our ozone and that's the hole in the ozone, which we have been repairing and has been getting a lot better. However, CFCs still banned in aerosols and things like that. So then what does drive all this stuff? Well, a lot of it is just our choices, our choices in energy, our choices in production, and our choices in diet. So what we have to figure out is what sacrifices are we willing to make? What advancements are we willing to make? What changes are we willing to make? And I'm not saying that, you know, we're necessarily gonna fix it as one person, but if everyone changes a little bit, then those things can add up to a large scale. However, let's think about it. The US is 300 million people. There's two countries much larger than us, India and China. And if you remember back from energy sources, there's a whole USA worth of people in India who don't even have electricity yet. That's gonna be way more greenhouse gases added, assuming they move to fossil fuels. China's over a billion people as well. That's a whole lot of people that need things and want things and want the lifestyle that we've had in the Western part of the world that they haven't gotten to yet necessarily. Now, of course, China in its cities has become developed, but there's still a lot of rural areas in China that are trying to catch up to its more um, urban parts. That's a whole lot of energy and a whole lot of resources that are gonna be needed. So what do we have to do? Well. We're gonna end it right here, but we need to start tracking CO2 and methane, seeing what choices we make and how they affect and what that means for the future.